Ever wonder what happened to the chefs who couldn't take the heat in Hell's Kitchen? Let's catch up with the ones who served up the worst dishes and see where they are now. Microwaves, Raj, and Amy's Baking Company. And yeah, it's time for me to call out my main man. Call him weird all you want, but I'm gonna defend this guy to my dying breath. Now, despite only lasting three episodes on the show, Raj somehow managed to earn the title of worst chef ever on Hell's Kitchen. It's kind of baffling, isn't it? Like, how does someone pull that off in such a short time? Uh, wait, what am I saying? Tavon exists. Well, uh, either way, let's find Find out. Raj, a 49-year-old personal chef from Queens, seemed like a fish out of water from day one. Despite being in way over his head, or well, putting his head into the freezer, he managed to stick around until Ramsay finally gave him the boot. Although it was surprising to see him last that long, you can't deny the entertainment he brought to the table. Now let's break down Raj's wild ride during the first signature dish challenge. So picture this, Vinny's dish was a bit of a mess, right? Understatement of the century. However instead of just hoping for the best like the rest of us, Raj decided to try living on a prayer. I was totally praying to God, and I'm not even that religious. I mean, I've hardly seen any contestants like him before or since. Well, fast forward to the judging round, and Raj found himself facing off against Sabrina. And he had already made a huge first impression. Nice suspenders. <sighs> oh, thank you. And oh yeah, he was pretty confident. I began cooking when I was 14 years old. I was always the best cook in the kitchen. As for his dish, it was just as weird as him. A seafood and veggie pancake. I've talked about how okonomiyaki is a thing in one of my much earlier videos, but that wasn't the problem Ramsay had with the dish. Pancake. Yeah, it's a pancake. What? That is a pancake? This so-called pancake looked nothing like one. In fact, it was dripping oil. I mean, I've never seen anything like that before, and I eat okonomiyaki all the freaking time. And Ramsey's reaction here is one that still lives in my head rent-free. Oh, it's going for a piss. A pancake that pisses. Even though the seafood was on point, Ramsey couldn't let the presentation slide. Eventually, Raj lost the round to Sabrina, and well, somehow that didn't come as a surprise. But hey, let's not be so down on the blue team here. Even though they took a big L, they somehow managed to turn things around and snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. And guess what? During their little celebration shindig, Raj decided to do something out of the ordinary. Oh my god. Holy shit. Now, that's one way to shake off a rough round in the kitchen. I mean, this dude, he's definitely a weirdo, but he's my weirdo. Anyway, wait till you see what happened in the dinner service. So, Raj was stuck with waiter duty, but things started off rocky when he fumbled explaining the specials to his first table. We have an amuse boost this evening of a... Yeah, um. Instead of smoothly taking orders table side, Raj got caught red handed scribbling them down at the pass. Ramsey wasn't amused. He gave Raj a serious dressing down, demanding to know why he was slacking off and not doing his job right. Table three, guests four. Why are you do this at the table as you're talking to them? And it doesn't stop there. Feeling the heat, Raj was given an ultimatum by Ramsey either step up in the kitchen or hit the road. Raj! Help them off. So, with his tail between his legs, Raj headed back to the kitchen, ready to get back in the game. But instead of landing one of the cushier jobs, he got stuck helping Boris at the pizza station. You'd think making pizza would be a breeze, right? Well, not for Raj. Somehow, he turned even the simplest tasks into pretty huge ordeals. Out of the doors, you can't roll it. Roll the f pizza dough. Here's more mozzarella. So his teammates knew it wasn't gonna work out. Now, instead of rolling out the dough like Boris asked, he was off in his own world, busy cutting mozzarella cheese. I rolled a f***ing pizza dough, what are you doing? Are you f***ing... And Boris couldn't handle it. I mean, can you blame him? My partner was sent here to sabotage. That guy is f***ing nuts. As you can imagine, both teams crashed and burned that night. And Ramsey wasn't holding back. He straight up accused Raj of zoning out and not giving a damn. And to add insult to injury, both teams were asked to nominate two poor souls for elimination. Both teams wanted to go upstairs and nominate. Two from the men, two from the ladies. Looks like Raj's dinner service disaster had burned him a one-way ticket to the chopping block. You did things today that were totally out of character for any chef. 
Raise your hand for Raj. So Raj stepped forward and made his case to stick around. Now that I'm more familiar with everything, I'll be able to jump in there and really cook the food correctly. Ramsey was surprised to say the least, but despite the skepticism, Raj managed to avoid elimination. It was a close call, but he lived to cook another day. Raj is back! That's right, Ramsey. I'm ready to fight. Whoa! And as I'm sure we're all very aware of, Raj got the boot after just two more episodes. But hey, you gotta admire the guy's confidence, right? Right before the next challenge was about to start, Raj decided to spice things up a bit. As Ramsey and the rest of the crew were getting ready, Raj started breathing heavily, like he was auditioning for the role of a horror movie villain or something. For all the wrong reason. Who's breathing? And nope, it doesn't end here. So picture this. The blue team scored a big win in the sushi challenge and was treated to a fancy trip to Cellar 360 in San Francisco for a swanky wine tasting session with none other than Ramsey himself. Talk about a dream reward, right? But leave it to Raj to put his own personal spin on things. Instead of savoring the flavors like a sophisticated wine connoisseur, he was knocking back those glasses like it was a college kegger. Who needs elegance when you got a ton of misplaced frat bro energy, right? For me, it was like, oh my god, I need a glass of wine. <laughs> I'm talking loud gulps, probably some noisy slurping too. Raj's wine tasting skills were looking and sounding more like ramen eating etiquette. And when dinner service rolled around, Raj was assigned to the garnish station. But boy, did that not go so well for the guy. You're not even cutting, you're just patting it down and bruising it. I'm really psyched to like uh, shine tonight. What was he even doing on the show? So Ramsey was already on edge, and Raj managed to earn his wrath by not hearing an order, despite being right next to him. Not a great start. I'm, I'm here, yes, yeah, chef. What do you need? I'm here. What do I need? What did I just call out? What did I just call out, Raj? I'm talking to you. His presence of mind was clearly compromised. But things really hit the fan when Ramsey confronted him about Vinny allegedly telling customers not to order sides because of Raj's slow pace. So why is he not taking the orders? I have no idea. Why? Look at these sides. He's already up. Raj denied it, even showing Ramsey the prep sides, but then Vinny spilled the beans. You better understand one fing thing. You do not decide what goes out of this kitchen. So he thought Raj was gonna mess it up. As if that wasn't enough, Ramsey caught Raj stacking up garnishes that weren't even ordered. That's a big no-no in Ramsey's book, and so... In about five minutes time, you'll have all those f***ing garnishes right outside no, no, the kitchen. Like Back in the dorms, you know what he did next? He tried to cool off by sticking his head in the freezer, literally chilling out. But when the rest of the blue team got the boot too, all the refrigeration in the world wasn't gonna cool down the mood. Raj tried to play the role of the peacemaker, calling his teammates kids in an attempt to defuse the situation. But Lewis wasn't having any of it. He went off on Raj, accusing him of being condescending, and before you know it, the whole team was ganging up on him. Shut the f up. Listen, listen. How Shut the f you up. condescend hey, me? Hey, listen. You're a f douchebag. Oh, no, bro! You're attacking me, mother. Things got heated, and again, no amount of freezer magic was going to save the day here. In the midst of it all, though, Raj found the strength to fire back, calling his team a bunch of snakes. Needless to say, it wasn't exactly a cozy dorm room hangout. You know, here I am, I'm in that snake pit, and I'm the mongoose, and the mongoose is trying to fight the cobra. And then, because of course, why not at this point, the blue team's dinner service turned into an absolute disaster, crashing and burning in spectacular fashion. They lost by a landslide to the red team, and when nomination time came around, Raj wasn't pulling any punches. He was quick to call out Vinny for what he saw as setting him up to take the fall. Either way, though, Raj found himself in the hot seat as the blue team's first nominee for elimination. But he wasn't going down without a fight. Dude knew karate, after all. Anyway, when he tried to defend himself, Vinny shut him down, leaving Raj in a tight spot. They're gonna vote for me when Vin goes out to the dining room and tells them don't order any sides, because Raj can't cook them. Eventually, Boris got thrown into the mix as the second nominee, and the tension was thick enough to cut with a knife. But again, Raj wasn't going down without a little karate on the way out. 
In his plea, he argued that he was being wrongly accused. I'm getting more familiar with everything, and it's going to be good. It's just I need a little more time. Ramsey didn't hold back either, pointing out Raj's age, 49, the oldest on the team, and challenging him to pick up the pace. It was sink or swim time for Raj, and somehow, he managed to stay afloat, surviving elimination. But it'd be the last time. Not going to get ahead of myself here, though. As he left the chopping block, Raj didn't shy away from that confidence of his, boldly declaring, he'd win Hell's Kitchen and brushing off any doubts from his teammates. But just as he was strutting his stuff, he took a bit of a tumble. I know that the guys in my team are shitting in their pants knowing that Raj, I'm here to stay, whether you like it or not, because I am the best. Surviving two close calls in a row is no small feat, and you better believe he wasn't about to let Vinny forget it. He made sure to give him a playful ribbing for his little stunt with the sides during dinner service. Revenge is sweet, right? But Raj's celebration didn't stop there. Even in the wee hours of the morning, he was still riding high on his victory. I'm talking 2.18 a.m. You have to handle him with kid gloves, though. Yes. Ah! We gotta get this guy to work somehow. Way past my bedtime, that's for sure. Anyway, skipping ahead to the paramedic service challenge, Raj found himself manning the scrambled egg station. Seems like a straightforward task, right? Well, not exactly. When he presented his scrambled eggs to Ramsey, well, you know how much Ramsey loves scrambled eggs made his way, right? All of you, come here, quick, hurry up. Get out of the way, get out of the way. Ooh, get out of the way. Taste it, taste it, taste it, taste it, taste it. Not an ounce of seasoning. Turns out they were bland as can be with zero seasoning. Always the seasoning, seriously. There's not an ounce of seasoning in there. These guys save lives for a living. Yeah, and you're about to that breakfast. Feeling pretty confused and probably a bit frustrated too, Raj decided to step away from the chaos and gather his thoughts. I try to make some sense out of this intense chaos. I tried to clear my head by sticking my head in the refrigerator. He ducked into the fridge for a quick breather, as is his M.O., but Ramsey caught wind of his little escapade and wasn't too pleased. Let's just say Raj got a not-so-gentle reminder to get back to work and fast. In the end, despite his efforts, the blue team ended up losing the challenge. Just when Raj tried to speak up about his performance, Trev shut him down real quick. We gotta figure out what you're good at. You gotta be good at something, right? Mister, I'm a chef and I'm almost 50. I got more experience than everybody. What the f*** have you done so far? So, things got really bad. Later on, during dinner service, Raj found himself in yet another sticky situation. He initially claimed he was ready with the refired salmon, but then did a complete 180 and asked for just one more minute. Ramsey let him have it, calling him a f bozo in front of everyone. Despite the setback, Raj finally brought up the salmon, but here's the kicker. It was still raw. It's raw. It's f***ing raw. It's real. Okay. Come on, man. It's raw. Completely oblivious to why his salmon got rejected, Raj decided to try and get some answers from Ramsey. Bad move. And Ramsey decided to cover his ears like a five-year-old. Thing chef or no? Not to me, you know. You know the, the salmon I gave you that you smashed, right? But Raj wasn't about to back down. He pressed Ramsey for an explanation, only to be met with the full force of the rage that Ramsey could muster. Hey, what do you think this is? A talk show? Cook your f***ing dish and shut your fat mouth! So, Ramsey caught Raj sneaking a bite to eat. And instead of taking it easy on him, he mocked him, patting his stomach and all. But Raj, ever the optimist, took it in stride. But that's so good. It's really a waste. Wow. It's really tasty. Oh, f***. But wait, it gets even crazier. Raj delivered his halibut dish and Ramsey actually accepted it. A rare win for our boy Raj. But then disaster struck. Ramsey spotted three Dover souls cooking away, even though no one had ordered them. Why would I try to fire three tables? Uh, uh, yes, um, donkey. Vinny piped up, saying Ramsey wouldn't accept them now. And just when they really weren't in a good spot for more bad news, Raj revealed there was no more Dover Soul left, despite, ironically, three orders outstanding. Soul Special! Chat, we ran out of the Soul Special. I've got three on order! 
Needless to say, Ramsey and the blue team were horrified. After some serious pondering, Ramsey decided to send Raj out to the dining room to break the news to the diners who had ordered the Dover Souls in the first place. But Raj tried to argue his way out of it. I need so I need chicken. another jacket though. I can't go out there with this jacket. Right, come here, come here. Ramsey was having none of it, angrily ordering him to leave. Even sous chef Scott jumped in, aggressively telling Raj to drop his apron and scram. Fuck off out there, will you? I can't, I can't. Put it down and get out there! Finally, in the dining room, Raj faced the music and informed the table about the situation, offering up alternative fish dishes. And against all odds, despite Raj's mishaps, the blue team somehow managed to pull off a win for the service. Which, if you didn't have any context for what was coming next, you'd think Raj would be safe. Well, despite being on the winning team, Raj's journey in Hell's Kitchen came to an end that night. He was eliminated for being the weakest performer across the first three services and just not cutting it in the high pressure environment. It was clear he was way out of his league. You big boy are out of your league. And I personally can't go an inch further. When the time came for him to leave, Raj was understandably shocked. He reflected on his time in the competition, admitting that he never really clicked with any of his teammates. Not to mention Ramsey or sous chef Scott. Despite the challenges though, he expressed gratitude for the experience, acknowledging that it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. I can't believe it. it's just a shock. I didn't get along with chef Ramsey, I didn't get along with Scott, but it was a great experience. I had a great time. I'm really glad I did it. Ramsey summed it up perfectly, a little too perfectly in my opinion. When the going gets tough in the kitchen, a chef puts his head down and cooks. All Raj wanted to do was put his head in the freezer. And that's why his stay in Hell's Kitchen was a short one. It was a tough lesson for Raj, but one he'll likely never forget. So, what happened after the show? Despite being dubbed as the worst chef to ever walk through those doors, he garnered a loyal fan club with his memorable antics. And I'm the chairman of that little club if I do say so myself. Fight me in the comments over it. Anyway, Raj returned to his roots after his time was up that season, resuming his career as a personal chef. As of 2021, he's been hard at work whipping up culinary delights at Frankel's in Brooklyn and lending his experience as a catering chef at various venues, including the prestigious Rockefeller Center. In addition to his culinary endeavors, Raj also embarked on a journey towards a healthier lifestyle, shedding some pounds along the way. People on Reddit have pretty polarized opinions about the guy, and I mean, given how he acts even at his best, that's no surprise, really. Some are confused by his actions and wonder if something might be up with him. They think that maybe the stress of the cooking show got to him. Others say that Raj is actually a good cook, but the pressure of the show made him act weird. They think maybe he wasn't used to being on camera or working with other chefs. People also talk about why Raj was picked for the show in the first place. Some say it was more about his personality than cooking skills, but the guy's got the chops to hack it in a normal kitchen, so I don't think it's that. But despite all the mixed opinions, people really like Raj. They think he's funny and made the show more interesting, even for the short time he was on it. Overall though, those feelings are pretty strong. Whether you love him or find him strange, he definitely made his mark on Hell's Kitchen. And despite the ups and downs, Raj remains dedicated to his passion for cooking, even to this day. And Hell's Kitchen may not have been his speed, but he's embraced the experience and continues to thrive in the culinary world. Now, whether he was trying to defend himself from Ramsay's wrath, getting an earful from his teammates, or pulling out something funny to lighten the mood, he definitely kept things interesting. Love him or hate him, you can't deny he was probably one of the most memorable contestants the show's ever seen. But hold on, there's more to it was directed towards Sharon from season four. So what happened is, during the signature dish challenge, Sharon presented something that ultimately didn't meet the high standards of the competition. And Ramsey didn't hold back in letting her know. You know damn well that isn't up to scratch. For Hell's Kitchen. Her first service in the kitchen only added to her troubles. Ramsey called her out for an unseasoned risotto, something, something, it's always the seasoning, and when asked to taste her own dish, she couldn't see the issue. Oh, come on, Sharon. It's like rice pudding. 
Instead of taking responsibility, Sharon attempted to shift some of the blame onto her teammates. That's not just my fault, and it's too bad that Chef Ramsay didn't see that. Later, in a bid to redeem herself, she ended up preparing more risotto than needed, which only confused matters and discouraged Ramsay further. Which one are you cooking? This one. Whose is this one? I don't know, I'll get rid of it. Oh, come on, Sharon. The final blow came when her refire, intended to be an improvement, was rejected because of an overwhelming <laughs> amount of garlic. <laughs> Sharon, enough's enough. I'm going to put some more makeup on. I mean, I always add more garlic than it says to on the recipe, but there are limits. Yeah, she was removed from her station right then and there. However, during prep before the second service, her confusion over the recipes led Corey to step in and guide her through the tasks, which didn't sit well with the team. Our team has a problem right now, just worth sharing. It puts us at a really big disadvantage. And things didn't improve during dinner service when Sharon was assigned to the meat station. Ramsey quickly noticed that she had placed cooked meat near raw meat, something that we know all too well from Kitchen Nightmares that is never a good idea. And as the service continued, Sharon's struggles persisted. She forgot to send out a beef dish, causing further delay and frustration. When Ramsey tried to see if she was communicating with Christina, her response was... Well, it wasn't a response, actually. It was more like nonsensical blabbering. No, I did it. I did it early. I thought it was coming. She just yelled it was coming. Assuming Christina would be ready, she didn't bother communicating, leading Ramsey to bestow upon her a title for the ages. You're not really a chef, are you? You're just a showgirl with a big feather coming out your ass. Man, you think you've heard it all. But the breaking point came when a halibut dish prepared by Jason was sent back and Ramsey accused Sharon of slowing down the entire operation. In response to the mounting issues, Ramsey made the difficult decision to shut down the restaurant. By this point, Sharon's inexperience and inability to handle the pressure of Hell's Kitchen had become glaringly evident, ultimately leading to her downfall in the competition. Surprisingly, she wasn't nominated for elimination by Corey. However, Ramsey decided to make a tough call. Two services. You haven't convinced me that you can cook. He chose to eliminate Sharon outright, citing her consecutive poor performances. But Sharon wasn't convinced. I don't think Gordon liked me from the start. He just had the wrong image of me. Well, she didn't have the skill, but she sure had the confidence. And next up, all I can really say is him. I ain't came out here to f***ing lose, I'm f***ing furious. But hold on, because things were about to get really intense. Hey, from Sticky, I love y'all, everything, Leia. Viewers have rightly pointed out that his random outbursts and erratic personality definitely made him difficult to work with. And, well, I don't disagree. My team better care as much as I do, because if not, I'm going to start chopping them off real quick. And if I have to, I'll play Blue Kitchen by myself. Yeah, he ended up costing their team the win in the very next challenge. That is brawl, and it's too bad, because had that been in for another two minutes... You see, Brett first appeared in Season 14 where his passion for food and strong desire to win were evident, no denying that. Unfortunately, he faced a setback due to a previously diagnosed slip disc, which forced him to withdraw from the competition. Uh, get better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chef Ramsay. It was an honor. Thank take you. I will take this to the grave. However, he made a comeback in Rookies vs. Veterans, with even more passion this time around. And also some pretty interesting details about his life. For instance, when asked about how many kids he had, he said, I'm sure there's more out there that I don't know about, they don't want to tell me about, to be honest with you. Nah, maybe like six. Ah, uh, somebody's been busy. Anyway, there were instances where he, along with other team members, particularly Scott Lee, were accused of being bullies. The situation got so intense that, despite not having a strong bond with Trev, he ended up being the favorite among the men. And what's more, he even had fans of the show on his side. What flavor is it, banana or carrot? Oh. <laughs> but he wasn't invincible by any means, since Brett did come under fire for casually saying something as hideous as this. Raw passion from raw emotion, homie. 
Many people have called him out on this, saying they lost respect for him immediately. Personally, I think he should have gone home during the 11th service. He not only ignored every hygiene standard in the book by cooking and sending out halibut in a dirty pan. Look what I'm just being given now. Your pan's filthy, dirty. I just look at the. But also threw caution and safety standards to the wind by doing something just so monumentally stupid. The salmon is ice cold. Hurt, I'll get it back in. No, no, I'm to come here. Yeah, the raw salmon was meant for Malcolm Smith's five month pregnant wife. A hell of a baby shower gift if I've ever seen one. Speaking of which, Jeremy from season 11 immediately came to mind when I sat down to make this list. Right from the start, this dude was lost. In the signature dish challenge, it quickly became apparent that Jeremy was pretty clueless about what he was cooking, despite his self proclaimed title as a lead cook. When asked about the type of meat he used, Jeremy hesitated, going back and forth over whether it was a ribeye or not, before eventually settling on a belief that it was. Well, no, it's not a ribeye, chef. I think it's a. Uh... I think it's real. I'm sorry. To make matters worse, Ramsey didn't love the texture of his dish. When you slice into a steak of that quality, you destroy the fibers and the texture because you're stuffing it. The next day, during prep, it seemed like the men's team had their act together, working cohesively and with focus. Unfortunately, Jeremy was the exception. He appeared completely lost and bombarded his teammates with a barrage of questions. I don't know how to make a pointer. I'm just a little concerned right now. Man, I don't myself right now. But the real challenge came during the service when Ramsey was calling out orders. He called for three halibuts, one bass, and one chicken. Jeremy, however, struggled to relay the order correctly, even needing Dan's correction, much to Ramsey's visible frustration. And poor Ramsey had to call out the ticket again. But something happened. The three, the, the three, three halibuts, the two, two, uh. Come on, what's up with you? By the way, Anthony had the perfect response. Jeremy, he's telling you to. You just say it right back, man. Pretty sure birds can do that. That never gets old. However, Ramsey's patience had reached its limit, and he had to repeat the ticket for the third time. Yet, Jeremy still struggled to repeat it correctly. To, uh, to, 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 uh, get out! Uh, yeah, he had it coming. Not surprising why his performance kept getting progressively worse. On the first order during the breakfast service, he failed to provide any answers, which understandably infuriated Ramsey. To make matters worse, when confronted about his inaction, his confession was, well, hilariously bad. Can I get an answer from you? Yes, you can. What was that callback? I wasn't able to hear it, Chef. The issues continued to pile up as he struggled with basic communication and timing. When Anthony called out 30 seconds for his omelet, Jeremy seemed unable to grasp the concept, repeatedly asking how much time he needed. Can I walk this plate? No. Sam, Hurry up, Sam, it's dying. Come on. Watch your back, watch your back, come on. Things went from bad to worse when he presented a croissant at the pass, but a critical component, the smoked salmon, was missing. Instead of efficiently resolving the situation, Jeremy walked to the back of the kitchen and asked Dan for a plate, seemingly without any awareness of the urgency of the service. What's even more surprising is that the plate he brought to the pass turned out to be, well, you have no idea. Some disgusting pig brought me the sample scrambled eggs. Need I say anything more? It was the sample plate that Ramsey cooked an hour earlier. And to put things into perspective, this viewer thought it would be better to have five Rajas than one Jeremy. Yeah, he was that bad. Which is why, despite being on the winning team that night, he was eliminated. But nothing could shake his delusion. And above all, I'm a great chef. Oh man, this guy was something else. But you know what? I think Charlene from season 21 was right up his alley. Despite showing promise with her signature dish, she quickly went downhill. Working alongside Billy at the meat station, her inattention to Ramsey's orders was a cause for concern. Her initial failure to provide a timely answer regarding the cooking time for chicken drew Ramsey's ire, further indicating her lack of focus. Hey, you should be moving there. You're not staring at me. 
When she finally responded with a 15-minute estimate, mind you, it only takes six, her rationale was something else. Uh, was you know what? I was trying to overestimate. A so. wrong number? Yes. 15 minutes. Wait, what? Come again? The situation escalated as it was revealed that Charlene had delayed starting the chicken, which I'm sure you can guess how Ramsey felt about it. How can we be this bad? We're not even moving at snail pace. We're not even moving at all. Eventually, she relinquished control of the meat station to Billy entirely, who ended up serving raw chicken, the first in a series of events that led to the blue team's expulsion from the kitchen. Cole Wellington and pink chicken. And now that I think about it, I have another name from season 21. O'Shea made raw chicken wings during the second challenge, and despite his experience working at a lobster restaurant before, he failed miserably in the whole lobster prep challenge. A sort of claw, a knuckle, a claw missing, four legs, where's your claw? What a shame. When he sliced into an overcooked Wellington, he didn't respond to Ramsey, leading to frustration on his part, who clearly wanted more engagement and communication from the team. This lack of response ultimately resulted in overcooked Wellingtons being served. It's frustrating because I'm trying to get the meat out and I'm forgetting which meat needs to be rested. Everything is just going haywire. Oh, and his troubles continued when he failed to provide Ramsey with a time estimate for the order of a two-top, celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary. Although he managed to send up his lamb, it turned out to be undercooked as well. Get out! Oh crap. But at least Charlene and O'Shea were better than this next contestant who had the shortest and funniest tenure on Hell's Kitchen. I'm out. My bags are packed. You can kiss my First, his signature dish was just plain awful, and it wasn't anywhere near worth the sticker price. What is that? Sausage gravy over biscuits. Sausage gravy, yes. Over biscuits, yes. Next, he displayed a complete lack of respect by making a bunch of sexist comments. Women are the best at cleaning, so it's right up their alley. Ah, way to go, jackass. During service, his ineptitude in the kitchen became painfully evident. He was caught putting raw lamb in the oven without searing or seasoning it first. And the fucking lamb goes in the oven like that. No salt, no pepper, no seasoning. His attempts to interfere with his teammates' tasks, such as cooking spinach, only added to the chaos. Ramsey had to intervene, instructing him not to touch the spinach and to focus on the lamb. But he still kept failing miserably at preparing the lamb, which led to a furious Ramsey discovering a massive pile of wasted meat on the station. Cue the voice cracks. Look! 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 What the fuck is this? This was the breaking point, and Ramsey swiftly eliminated him. Get out! Pile of shit. And fun fact, many viewers think that he was a plant. Mainly because Robert was returning that same season, so they probably needed an excuse to make him return. But hey, I don't believe in this theory personally. Hear me out. I don't think his elimination was scripted, since someone was definitely going home the first night anyway, and Robert still would have been assigned to a team. But what I do believe is that absolutely nobody could stand this next contestant. You can kiss my big fat Bye, Chef Ramsey. She was similar to Louis, only twice as pathetic. And, well, I think her signature dish was her on a plate. The dish resembles you to a tea. Boring. In the next dinner service, Nicole was stationed at the fish station with Joy. Her issues with attention and clarity were evident early on when she couldn't recall who was responsible for scallops, which just made a huge mess of things. As Joy attempted to lead the station, Nicole's struggles persisted, and she eventually gave up on cooking the scallops altogether. Ramsey confronted her about it, which ended up making things worse. If you don't put any effort into it, do me a favor, take that apron off and f off home. Yes, chef. Nicole's inability to work on a team and her plain old bad attitude were clear barriers to her success. During prep, her not remembering the recipe showed that she was way out of her depth. Take five duck tortellini and drop it in the thing. The dinner service made that even more clear, with a lobster risotto not having any lobster in it and another with way too much pepper. The results? The boot. That is so 
Peppery has actually started discoloring. She wasn't any more graceful in defeat either, since she made clear how much she respected Ramsay on the way out. Good night. I don't give two flying what he thinks and what he says. What a charming lady. Now, do you remember the winner of Hell's Kitchen season 10? If you think it's Christina Wilson, then you definitely haven't seen this. Is Tavon. <laughs> How humiliating is that? Man, this dude really left a legacy. I mean, he crashed and burned. Sorry, froze. But I mean, I guess he wasn't completely useless, since Ramsay used him as a bad example. <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> First, he whipped up a dish with shrimp, scallops, and crab. But it ended up being drenched in vinegar, which Ramsay found hideous. How much vinegar did you put in there? I like the drizzle. Drizzle? During dinner service, Tavon was on the appetizer station with Guy and Royce. He somehow managed to send up a raw pigeon. This pigeon's that raw, it can still fly. Touch it. So cold and raw. Ramsey was so confused that he questioned if he was really an executive chef. Are you executive chef? Do you actually cook in your restaurants? Yes, I did. I mean, he deserved to be mocked. He was the cause of so much waste. Expensive hand dive scallops. Look, you sabotage them. And the scallops, oh, the scallops. They were sliced so badly that they, wait, I can't possibly come up with a better analogy than this. Tavon treated those scallops like a homeless rat. Ramsey was furious and asked why he was messing up so badly. To which Tavon simply laughed it off. Imagine laughing in the face of Gordon Ramsay of all people. The audacity. When Tavon was asked to rate his performance, he compared himself to a prep cook thrown on the line. Ramsay wasn't having it and said he was more like, well, in the spirit of letting these guys make the quips, just listen for yourselves. Well, that's way off my estimate. I would have said dishwasher on a shit day. Ouch. Tavon was thrown out of the competition, and no, he didn't take it well. Chef Ramsay, you're a f***ing douchebag. Fast forward to the present, and his business named Celebrity Chef Tave has extremely bad reviews online. People who took his classes called him an absolute walking disaster and have accused him of scamming. Apparently, people purchased or booked his classes, went to the place where the class was being held, but Mr. Executive Chef didn't bother showing up. Absolutely no information about it being canceled or moved somewhere else. They even tried to call, but couldn't leave a message because the voicemail was full. Well, it looks like nothing's changed. But this next contestant's performance in season 19 was characterized by a series of mistakes and a distinct lack of focus. Doesn't narrow it down much, I know, but stick with me here. Elliot's rice-encrusted salmon didn't impress Ramsay, who was disappointed that the skin was removed. You're replacing it with a blitzed brown rice with sesame. I'm gonna give you a two out of five. Later, during the creative shrimp challenge, Elliot presented a sauteed white shrimp with a spring vegetable succotash. Unfortunately, Ramsay found the succotash to be a greasy clump of vegetables, leading to yet another failure. And that's it, just sauteed vegetables. The time really caught up to me, chef. It's just a clumpy, greasy pot of vegetables. His struggles continued during the dinner service when he was assigned to the garnish station alongside Cody. Drew's request for time went unanswered, and Ramsay was rightfully frustrated, questioning why Elliot was just standing around without actively cooking anything. What the f are you doing? Get involved, Elliot! Yes, Help your team! Yes, well, it looks like he had given up. And that's exactly what he did. Now he's he's standing, shut him. He's standing there doing jack shit. In his plea for redemption, Elliot admitted to losing focus and direction during the service, but tried to separate his performance in the kitchen from his personal character. Ramsey, however, didn't hold back and pointed out that Elliot's inaction was a significant issue. How do you lose focus when you did nothing? Good catch. When asked if he believed he was better than Drew, this is what he said. The answer is no, chef. Give me a jacket. 
With that, Ramsey made a straightforward, easy decision. You see, he just doesn't tolerate such a lack of self-esteem. And what a better way to finish than with a universally hated, emotionally stunted man-child. Who won Hell's Kitchen and has his pocket full of money and has to beat women off with a stick for God's sake. During the signature dish challenge, Ramsey's verdict on his dish was brutal. And not only did Jason's culinary skills fail to impress, but his obnoxious comments about women were equally disturbing. He showed a complete lack of respect by making offensive remarks about losing to a girls team and implying that women's abilities were limited to ironing contests. We're gonna win because we're men. This ain't the Dustin housekeeping challenge here. Yeah, spoiler alert, they lost the challenge. And his performance was especially shit. Hands on my desk, please. Holy Mac, did you f the chicken? He didn't even bother showing up to service, instead going outside to smoke and pick at his toes. No, I am not kidding. And Ramsey had to play the nagging mother to get him working again. <laughs> When he finally got to the appetizer station, things didn't get better. He sent out a terrible, terrible risotto. Let me taste it. No. <laughs> taste that. You, taste that. Yikes. Everything he touched, he ruined. And Ramsey's patience wore thin as he repeatedly called out his incompetence. You can't even get two dishes together. That's how shit you've been. I don't want any more embarrassment. His turn at the fish station was no better as he served raw fish and had the audacity to deny it. It's not mine. How dare you? It's just come back from the table. Oh, okay. This led Ramsey to shut down the restaurant. In the dessert phase, his inability to handle souffles and his suggestion to rub sugar around the rim mixed with butter and cocoa powder left Ramsey frustrated. Sugar, butter, and the cocoa powder, and try to see if that keeps him from sticking. That was easily the worst meltdown Ramsey had over a contestant's incompetence. But again, he wasn't just a shitty cook. He couldn't help being a sexist prick every chance he got. I don't think the girls have a clue what they're doing. But what do you expect without a man over there to lead them, of course? Jason had zero redeeming qualities. Absolutely none. Ah, if only you were more in tune with your emotions to care. And if you thought that was crazy, then wait for the next chefs and their dishes. Tiffany's behavior was honestly quite frustrating. She had this tendency to get drunk and spread rumors, which made everything worse and caused unnecessary tension and conflict within the team. Like, really. She was HK's very own devil. What really got to me was her hypocrisy, which ranks in my top three of her worst traits. She claimed to hate kids and believed they wouldn't appreciate fine dining, as if that justified serving them burnt pizza. I really hate cooking for children. Kids don't know what fine dining is, so their opinions really don't matter to me. Yet, around the same time, she decided to mock the blue team for screwing up their dinner service. It got so bad that the red team had to step in and defend them. That led Tiffany to think the rest of them were beneath her, as she continued to taunt them, even in the dorms. Here's how you treated me. You're here, I'm here. Ba, 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 ba. Don't do that. She continued to insist that they shouldn't be concerned about their pride and should only focus on the customers. It's not about you in this competition, it's about the fucking customer and the food. Do you realize that? Funny you say that, Tiffany. Here's the thing, those kids you dismissed, they're customers too, and they deserve as good a dining experience as anybody else. Remember that potato dish? But honestly, I couldn't call it a dish in good faith. It honestly looks like it could have hurt somebody. I mean, Tiffany's double standards really didn't sit well with me. Let's take a look at the second dinner service, shall we? She put her manipulativeness front and center by deliberately sending out an incomplete order of scallops just to shift the blame onto Barbie and make her look incompetent. And she only did this because of a personal grudge, rather than out of genuine concern for the team's performance. Here you go, Barbie. I'll just throw you under the bus because that's where you belong. She was also straight up dishonest, like when she suggested firing up extra sea bass for insurance. Why don't we fire like four more fucking bass right now? Hey. 
Newsflash, here in Hell's Kitchen, they cook Dory to order. She also deflected blame onto her teammates when confronted by Ramsey, and the entire team got yelled at instead. To top it off, she acted like it wasn't even her fault in the first place. I don't understand why I'm getting yelled at. I'm trying to fucking put out food for the customer. I mean, I'm pissed off that he's mad at me. And I mean, teamwork and cooperation were completely foreign concepts to her. Yeah, she was nasty, with a capital N. No doubt. And her relentless, unwarranted hate towards Barbie has been called out over and over again by fans of the show for being borderline racist. No, I'm not about to get fucking choked out. I'm not about to get choked out, you dumb cunt. God, it pisses me off even talking about it. Remember this incident from season five? So Royce started complaining about Mexican cuisine, making stereotypical comments about flour tortillas, and even suggesting he could make better tacos than Kimmy, a Memphis native. Wow. I will not let it happen again. Tiffany, who had earlier advocated for a no bitching policy, jumped right in to keep the chaos going. She then got super drunk on a bunch of wine and laid it out clear as day to Kimmy and Robin. My was like, what? Hey, yeah. God, if somebody wanted to make a director's cut of this season that completely wrote Tiffany out, I'd watch it in a heartbeat. But anyway, I absolutely agreed with Brian when he said this. Cruel and unusual punishment to have to look at her and I'm done with her. So instead of addressing the issue constructively, she used Royce's complaints to pin the blame on Danielle, Dana, and Christina. Like, way to throw them under the bus for something they didn't even say. You are in, sadly, for the most difficult punishment in the history of Hell's Kitchen. This kind of behavior was nothing short of mean and bitchy, and it seriously jeopardized the team's dynamic for the upcoming service. Like, hello, this isn't high school. All in all, her attitude sucked. And it's not like her performance was any better. Oh, but she made sure to criticize Barbie's chicken cooking skills every chance she got. Cooking a rest of chicken is, is about as easy as taking a shit. Anybody can do it. Are you that dumb? But the sad part is that she fucked up something as simple as mashed potatoes. Yes, Put sir. that down. Look at me. Shit burn mash. Get out. Get out! But to the relief of Hell's Kitchen fans around the globe, that overconfidence was what ultimately sunk her. Pride cometh before the fall. But hey, before I leave her alone, let's fondly remember the time sous chef Andy called her out for her poor attitude. Tiffany, sorry. No, you're fucking not. Yes, I am. You're the floppiest cook I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Sorry. Oh yeah, she was a huge mess. And oh, by the way, did you know that she's married now? And she took her partner's last name. And oh boy, you won't believe what it is. Tiffany Gray. Gross. Which I mean, could you imagine a more fitting last name considering she did this? Tiffany, what the fuck are you doing? And this. And this. Good job, burping. <laughs> See what I mean? You have such a fucking attitude. Why don't you take a walk and Dana take over her section? Yes, chef. And congrats, by the way, that makes you the only contestant to this date to be kicked out of the kitchen by a sous chef. Did she have any shame? Uh, apparently not. On her way back to the dorms, Tiffany seemed upset that her teammates had made her look bad. Yeah, even then, she refused to take accountability. But lo and behold, this next chef is the definition of a sore loser. I'm gonna definitely blackball you guys because you got fucked me so royally tonight. That's the runner-up of season eight, threatening to exclude his finale brigade from any work in whatever cities he'd be in. What a great display of maturity and sportsmanship, huh? The HK community has christened him as Russell, and you'll soon see why. High schoolers can be pretty annoying. But hey, nothing justifies a grown-ass man stooping to bullying, just because he was in a bad mood about losing the prom planning challenge. We're doing this for you. How about you back up a little bit? This is not a joke. I'm not here to play. If I didn't know any better, I'd think it was his prom that they'd ruined. Anyway, let me spell something out for you. Threats aren't an appropriate response to instructions, even if they were constant. At all. Also, in their defense, he did a pretty bad job at decorating. 
I'm not doing this for my 15 minutes of fame. I'm doing this for a fucking career, so step off. Wait, watch your language. I'm a grown-ass man. Bro, they are your customers, and flipping out on them is proof enough that he could not handle being Ramsey's head chef. Like I said, the dude was a bully, so unnecessarily aggressive. Now, we know how Russell felt about Trev, right? He's just like a zit on your ass, and you want to pop the motherfucker, but you know it's going to hurt and you can't reach it. That's Trevor. The dude couldn't help himself from micromanaging the guy and later admitted to sabotaging him. Oh, dude, that's way too, that's way too what? You can't do it on the heat. Yeah, on the corner. This is exactly how Chef Scott told me how to do it yesterday. But did you take it down to syrup? Yes. Come on, that's not a good look, man. See, I'm not the biggest Trev fan, but even I felt sorry for him when Russell threatened to assault him. You talked to me like you talked to me before about that salmon, I would have slapped the shit out of you. Well, he definitely crossed the line there. Lost all my respect, that's for sure. Not that he had it in the first place, but... Anyway, Russell's arrogance was put center stage throughout his time on the show, and it wasn't winning him any fans. Moreover, remember how he blamed it all on his team for losing the finale? I chose the team that I wanted, and I thought they would help me win, and in fact, they helped me lose, so... You know how bullies seek out power because they feel powerless themselves? Case in point, Russell. In the end, Russell's talent as a chef was overshadowed by his abusive behavior and arrogance. No amount of skill would ever make anybody want to work with him. Speaking of bullies, this next contestant was irredeemable. Stop acting like a baby girl. I can't even wrap my head around how infuriating Scott Lee's relentlessness towards Trev was, with that baby girl nickname of his. I mean, every time. Every damn time he opened his mouth to insult Trev, it was something sexist. God, they pulled Trev out of retirement for this, trading one bully for another. Again, like we learned with Russell, I don't care how good you are in the kitchen, if you're an asshole. How is he so unsympathetic to Trev's allergic reaction and taunting him for it? We're prima donna at, man. He's still getting his <laughs> looked at. <laughs> You all right, baby girl? It's not like he could control it. And what was wrong with the rest? Especially Jose. It's pretty shocking that someone who claimed family meant everything to him would encourage behavior like that. He had to know that Trev was uncomfortable with it. Oh, you're saying that you guys took care of all this without me? Yeah, baby girl, got your back. I see how it is. It's ironic because Jose always seemed so intense on being a hero to his family but he ended up being just as much of a villain as Scott Lee. Like, I mean, if a good person allows a bully to bully, you've got two bullies. Anyway, moving on, it's crazy how we got to see so many different personalities on Hell's Kitchen. Apart from Jason Underwood and Frank Kala, this next contestant was one of the rare few that had a shit personality, both on the show and outside the show. I'll fix it right now, So give me a proper fresh lobster towel. Get it. Yeah, I understand. So concentrate. Okay, sir. You should see the blatant racism he had for Hassan on Facebook. And thankfully, people had the presence of mind to call him out on it. The show only proved how thick-headed the guy was. Criticism just bounced off of him like he had a force field for the stuff. He never showed a single second of genuine self-reflection. Only a lot of blustering and putting on a show. It's astonishing how many opportunities he had to learn from some real top-notch chefs and industry leaders. Like, hello, Ramsey's right there. Instead, he chose to dig his heels in and deny their expertise, acting like he knew better in spite of all the years they had on him. Remember his comment after losing the creative sliders challenge? What the f do they know? That's why they're running burger joints. Yeah, I'm sure Ramsey and Christina Wilson work at McDonald's. I saw them at the one down the street from me. And just look at him constantly bitching and talking back to the judges. Like, he had so much growing up to do. So a lobster roll is a lobster roll, and then a slider is something completely... I didn't say it was a lobster roll, because it's made with shrimp, obviously. Is this a slider? To me, it is, Chef. To you, it's not. He really thought he did something revolutionary by refusing to accept any feedback. If I asked you for a lobster roll, would you do me a slider? <laughs> what the f slider is. 
Like, you knew he was trouble from the very first service. Matt's behavior on the fish station was nothing short of immature, and when he and Andrew got into an argument over the scallops, things took a turn for the worse. When Ramsey found out that the scallops were raw, he blamed Andrew for it and suggested checking camera footage for evidence. And I have to say this, Ramsey's reaction was entirely warranted. If I hear you talk about a camera one more time, I'll stick a GoPro up so you can see how you are. Sorry, bro, this is Hell's Kitchen. We don't break the fourth wall here. And what do you know? Wanna be Eminem here? Even challenge Ramsey to a fight during his elimination confessional. If I was on the street right now and he came up to me with that same I him up. Seriously, how low can you go? Well, we're jumping from one poor excuse for a person to another. Or two, because I couldn't decide if Aaron or Steve was the worst villain of season 13. They're both on my list because of their bitter, obnoxious attitude towards our man, Mr. 100. Sir, if you don't get the fuck away from me, I'm gonna beat the living fuck out of you. And like, leave Sterling alone, my dude. Dude's just having a good time and cooking up some great food. The key ingredient I used was love. <laughs> Agreed. Nobody, not even Ramsey, could go that far in his career if he didn't love cooking. But Aaron just had to be a pick me. Guess what? Love's not a fucking ingredient, asshole. And don't even get me started on how he was playing the martyr during his plea. As much as I'd love to run a restaurant for you, I'd love to be a Michelin star chef, but I don't think winning Hell's Kitchen is actually going to get me any close to my goal. Oh, Aaron, you really outdid yourself on that one. So you decided to quit the competition because you were well aware that your lackluster performances were leading straight to elimination, huh? How brave, a tactical retreat, right? And oh, let's not forget that absolutely pathetic excuse you came up with. I mean, seriously, anyone in their right mind would consider themselves lucky to be mentored by the Gordon Ramsay. How could that not lead to so many new doors opening up for you? But he was just a weaselly little man who gave up the second the going got tough. I think you would have learned a lot more here. And you're not willing to fight for it. Remember how at one point he labeled half of his teammates dead weight and conspired with Steve to undermine them? I don't want the downers on our crew. You know, honestly, I say we just yeah. This is coming from a guy who served raw scallops, despite being shown how to cook them. Wow, I have no words. But here's what I do have words for. Both of them loved kissing each other's asses. He was so unnecessarily petty. Like, despite losing the dog show planning challenge to Sterling, he called that winning dish of his no better than fast food. If I had to describe Sterling's crab cake in one word, it'd be fast food. You can see even the HK editors were having none of his attitude. Well, Sterling was fast and, well, he did serve food, so I guess he was half right. Shout out to all the editors in the world. The ones working on Hell's Kitchen for sure, and mine. Well, moving on again. This next chef had a terrible decline as season 12 progressed. Like one viewer pointed out, he quickly let his misogyny show once he was transferred to the red team. Any guesses? Yeah, that's Anton for ya. It's been like 10 years since I've worked with a girl in the kitchen. Women are more sensitive than men. Girls do get offended a lot easier. Funny how for some people, sensitivity means weakness, cowardice, or vulnerability. For Anton too. He saw it as super feminine and, in his eyes, somehow inferior. But let's put this into perspective. Men who assume that women are quick to take offense might actually be more worried that these women won't put up with their sexist remarks or won't find their shitty jokes funny. It's not about women being overly sensitive. It's more about these men fearing that they won't be able to get away with everything anymore. He was also so creepy. First with his comments about the sorority girls, which many of you guys pointed out too. I got all these sorority girls coming running out from every door, all different directions. And how he objectified Olympic figure skater Rachel Flat during one of the rewards. I'm not big on ice skating, but I'm an ass man. And the girl definitely has a little booty on her. Yikes, just 
Yikes. Fed up with Aaron's repeated mistakes in his last service, Ramsey finally let him have it for overcooking the Wellingtons. Anton, however, insisted that it was the oven's fault, claiming it was different from the one in the blue kitchen. An explanation that was so ridiculous and hard to believe that, well, nobody believed it. Like, I've mentioned it before, and I still don't get it. Despite sous chef Andy's attempt to explain that she had already coached the red team on the oven's correct settings, Anton dismissively refused her guidance simply because she was a woman. Normally for next door, it's 18 minutes and five minutes on the side. I let a restaurant know five minutes. Stop yelling at me. I've told them it's 14 minutes. Yeah. That actually happened. As the tension escalated, Anton seemed hell-bent on provoking sous chef Andy by asserting that he had everything under control. Don't think I'm gonna let some little girl get in my face. Like, hello? The little girl in question is one of Gordon Ramsay's most trusted sous chefs. Start ripping a new ass because you got issues on being a woman in the kitchen. No, Anton, I think you have issues with women in the kitchen. And I'm just going to piss you off more on purpose. Jeez, I absolutely can't stand this guy. Not gonna lie though, I enjoyed every single second of sous chef Andy ripping him apart. Don't you fucking talk back to me! Don't you ever I'm talk not back, to me. back to me! Yes, you are! Pull it together! He simply had a hard time accepting or respecting female authority, and I don't think he would have ever spoken to Ramsay like that. You guys are right. He was nothing if not a chauvinist prick. And the last person on my list is a classist schmuck who disrespected waiters, bragged about how great he was with Asian cuisine, only to crash and burn. I don't like waiters. Fuck them. They're annoying. And that has to be Dan. What a tool. Seriously, he had a lot of nerve calling waiters annoying when all he did was whine like a toddler throughout the entire 11th season. I 100% agree with this guy over here. If you have no respect for the wait staff, you have no respect for the customer's experience, and you have no business running a restaurant. Running a restaurant? How about being in a restaurant in the first place? Anyway, Dan's a big red flag. He showed how he was comfortable being rude and dismissive to people he thought were lower than him. His performance in the finale absolutely sucked, and I hope he made it up to Mary for costing her the victory. Dan could single-handedly be the reason why Mary loses Hell's Kitchen tonight, man. To quote this Reddit user, he was a grade A asshole. And now, the biggest douche award goes to... I don't know. You decide. Drop the winner's names in the comments below, and I might just make a whole video out of it where we actually crown a winner. But before that, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you thought this video was crazy, then don't forget to check this one right here. It's even better.